My name is Christine Quinlan Gordon. I live in Davisburg, Michigan, and uh, I'm 68 years old. My father is Franklin Quinlan. He's still alive. He's 97, and I personally think he might be one of the last grandchildren living of famine immigrants. <clears throat> His father, Joseph Quinlan, was born in Maidstone, Ontario in 1878, and my grandfather's parents, uh, Elizabeth McGuire and um, John Quinlan, were born in Ireland, came over in the famine. <clears throat> the McGuire's came in a large group from County Cavan. It was McHugh's and McGuire's, uh, three generations of the same family, 15 people. They all came together in 1847 to Maidstone, Ontario. I believe they came to Maidstone, Ontario because other cousins were already there. There were already McHugh's in Maidstone prior to 1847. Um, otherwise, it's kind of a very obscure place. I don't know why anyone would pick that to come to, so they, it, there had to be a reason. Um, <clears throat> the, my, I think my grandmother Elizabeth McGuire was about 14 when she came over. She was born in 1830 or 31, I have it somewhere. And um, she, uh, they came in 47, so she was a teenager. She went to Detroit, which was not very far away, probably 15, 20 miles at the most across the river into the United States and worked for a wealthy family as a domestic. And she um, met John Quinlan from Tipperary in Detroit. They married in Detroit uh, at Most Holy Trinity Parish in downtown Detroit. It's still in Corktown in Detroit and it's a very, you know, all the Irish still congregate there every St. Patrick's Day and the St. Patrick's Day Parade in Detroit starts from there and goes down Michigan Avenue to the Gaelic League. I'm very involved with Detroit Irish. Um, <clears throat> and uh, they lived in Detroit for a couple of years and then they decided to move out to the farming community where her family lived <clears throat> in Maidstone, Ontario. So all of the subsequent people, uh, children, they had about 10 children, they were all born in Maidstone, including my grandfather. He was the youngest of the 10. And um, uh, so that's the cabin people. Now the, the Tipperary people, if I were to um, tell you about that, uh, I can tell you where they came from in cabin, by the way. The two townlands I have for the McHughes and the McGuire's was Tully Nemoyle and Cora Trum. But I haven't been to the, these places in Cabot, so I don't know exactly where they are or if you can even find them from those townland names anymore. But they were on a deed when they bought their property in Maidstone. They had written where they were from. So uh, the Tipperary folks, I know a little bit more about where they're from. I have actually been there to the place and met the parish priest and looked up their names in the parish book. So. <clears throat> John Quinlan came with his brother Timothy Quinlan and brother James Quinlan. And I believe they came to Detroit because their either uncle or cousin Patrick Quinlan was already there because he was, um, he had actually bought a window, stained glass window in Most Holy Trinity Church in, in Detroit earlier. So they, but they were, they came during the famine. And later on they brought <clears throat> their younger sisters, Johanna and Jane. So they appear, the younger sisters were born in the late 1830s and their names are in the record book in Tipperary. It's um, the parish of Nakavilla, about five miles west of the Rock of Cashel. And their townland where they lived was um, uh, Kilmore. They call it Kilmore Village, but I think it was a townland. There's no real village there. And the parents, their parents were named um, Philip Quinlan and Mary Crow, but I don't think Philip Quinlan and Mary Crow ever left Tipperary. So it was just all their children that ended up going to Detroit. And um, Timothy, we know what happened to him. He married a Mary O'Donnell in Detroit. He had a bunch of kids, then Mary O'Donnell died, and he spread his children out, Timothy spread his children out among uh, his brothers and sisters in Detroit and Maidstone. And my, uh, great-grandfather and grandmother um, took in two of his boys and raised them. Willie who became a ship captain and 
you know, we have a lot of information on them as well. Um, Timothy went off to Chicago and for a while he wrote letters and sent money and then around uh, early around 1870, 71, he stopped writing. They never knew what happened to him and all of his descendants always wondered what happened to Timothy and my theory is that he died in the Great Chicago Fire in 1871. So they also had a brother James, he kind of disappeared but um, there was a James Quinlan in the Irish Brigade in um, in the Civil War. So I've been meaning to get the Civil War records and see if James's parents were um, Philip Quinlan and Mary Crow. Then I know he's the James Quinlan that we're looking for. So we haven't we haven't done that yet, you know. And um, Jane and um, uh, Johanna. I don't know what happened to them because, of course, women lose their their identity when they marry and they lose their last name. So I know they were around Detroit, but uh, a Margaret Quinlan, which might have been the Margaret that was the daughter of Timothy, went back to Ireland in uh, 1913 and she wrote a diary. And in her diary it says the names of the, the um, Philip Quinlan and Mary Crow and uh, the parish and the parish priest's name and all of that. So we have that. That's how we know where they're from in Tipperary. So it's, you know, just all of piecing the stories back together. Now my dad's mother was from Detroit and she was um, Gertrude Casey. And her uh, father was Jeremiah Casey and he was from Ireland. Um, so, so in the records, it says on his burial thing, and, but uh, I don't know where in Ireland he was from. And it says his mother was Mrs. Butler, and when he got married in Detroit in 1874, um, it said the sponsor, the people that stood up, you know, were Mary Butler and John Butler. But I think what it is is that Mr. Casey, his father, had died, and his mother remarried someone named Butler. So that's how... His mother is Mrs. Butler, and his stepfather is Mr. Butler. So I don't think they're actual blood relation to me. And I don't know where the Casey's are from. Um, the grandmother, my, my grandmother's mother, my great-grandmother, um, was Sarah Daly. And Sarah Daly's father was James Luke Daly, and he was from County Roscommon. He came slightly earlier than the famine. He, he served in the Michigan State Legislature for one term and so he has a bio and it says that he came with his family in 1838 from Roscommon, Ireland to upstate New York and then a few years later they moved to Michigan. And uh, so uh, that's how I know. And he married um, Luke James Luke Daly married Mary Kilroy, and the Kilroys were from Cork. So those are my famine people. And um, in 1997, when I was hearing a lot about the, um, <clears throat> the famine, I'd always been interested in the famine. Since the time I was a little kid, my father said, you know, we came, we came over in the potato famine and, you know, uh, he on St. Patrick's Day in grade school, like second grade, he put a little pin on me and it say, um, you know, Aaron Gobra. And I said, what's that mean? He said, it means Ireland forever. And uh, I said, well, what language is that? He said, well, that's Irish, you know. So I always wanted to learn Irish. I wanted to know everything about Ireland. and. Um, I uh, was always interested and I went in my t early 20s I went to Ireland and I told people I was famine Irish and they didn't want to know me I was so shocked I thought you know they said oh that's so long ago you're not Irish you're American you know and you feel bad you know and I'd always been very interested in, uh, in my heritage and I said you know if they had stayed they might have died and I wouldn't be here so I guess I have to be glad they came to the, you know, Canada and the United States. But on the other hand, I felt deprived of my thousands of years of heritage in Ireland, you know. And I always pursued it. And I went to um, a big famine lecture in uh, 
NYU back in the 90s and I met Christine Keneally and everything and I told her about my idea that I wanted to put up a famine memorial in this little Irish farming community in Canada, you know. And uh, so I uh, start, I approached a parish priest in Canada and I told him the idea and I said, could I use a parish hall and have a heritage day and everybody bring all their information about their families and I'll tell them my idea and we'll see what we can do. So we did that, it took three years, we raised enough money and we put up a big 12 foot granite uh, Celtic cross and I wrote the dedication. My cousin uh, Tim McGuire did the research in the parish uh, records and he got the names of 159 Irish famine families that founded the parish and they're all uh, <clears throat> on both sides of the base of the um, cross we put the names of all the Irish families that founded the area. The, there are a lot of famine graves in that um, I should say famine immigrant graves uh, in that cemetery at um, Maidstone Cross in um, Ontario. So uh, in 2000 we had enough money we put up the cross and it was really great and so it's still there now and um, I don't have a lot of pictures with me but I do have um, just happen to have I have many more I could email them to the project but um, this is a picture of my great-grandmother I'm thinking that that was probably taken in around 1880 uh, she was widowed in 1880 my uh, grandfather John Quinlan from Tipperary died in 1880 he was 64 years old he was born in 1816 she was born in 1830 in uh, Cavan and these are her two sisters one of them married uh, Reno a Frenchman and uh, this one here, and this one married a butler. Uh, and uh, oh no, she didn't marry a butler. She she married a McHugh, Bridget McHugh, and her other their other sister, the fourth one that isn't pictured, married a butler. So um, it's nice. I, I do also have a picture of their parents, and uh, I will send it on to the project. It was taken in 1858, and uh, the great grandparents. Uh, Tady McGuire and Bridget McHugh uh, had on their same clothes from Ireland 10 years later. She has a long dress to the floor and she has something that kind of looks like a wimple. And, um, and he has on a big top hat and a coat with tails and big boots that come up to the knee. So they look uh, very ancient and uh, they look like they're from the 1700s instead of the 1800s. But, I think maybe in Ireland they passed their clothes on from generation to generation, I don't know. So I thought you might like to see, if I can get it to come up here, a picture of the, um, the cross. And uh, this is our cross that we put up in, in Canada. And uh, it was put up in the year 2000 and I'm hoping we'll have another exciting dedication in the year uh, 2020 and uh, I don't know if I can show you the um, these are some of the names of the famine immigrants but I will email all of these on to the project so you'll have a record of it okay.